Greetings YouTube, thanks for clicking. I'm going to assume you've seen the teaser for this tutorial and want to know how I made it. And I'm also assuming that how doesn't mean a Sunday morning with a coffee sitting in the spare room trying not to be distracted by other videos on YouTube. This is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to be using After Effects to recreate the look of the nine planets of our solar system. Apologies to any lifeforms viewing this video from outside the Terran system, I don't mean to use exclusionary language. To keep these videos short, too late, I'm tackling one aspect per video. Sorry if that means you want to know how to recreate the rings of Saturn, you'll just have to wait for that one. For this video I'm actually offering two tutorials. Again, to keep this tutorial short, way too late, I'm splitting these up. This video you're watching now will cover using Video Copilot's excellent free Orb plugin to recreate the planet Mercury. I'll also be highlighting how you can use Element 3D to do the same. But if your graphics card can't handle Orb and you don't have the money for Element 3D, I've made a separate video demonstrating how you can get pretty darn close using CC Sphere in 3D space with 3D lighting. And even though Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, I'll be adding one anyway. I'm not planning to make dual tutorials each week, but you should be able to apply the concepts of CC Sphere's Mercury tutorial to everything else I'll be covering. Phew, okay, so we're a minute in. Back to Orb. Andrew Kramer and his team at Video Copilot have made this really easy and there's not a lot I need to cover. An image search for Mercury Texture Map produces a lot of the same results. Mercury was mapped by NASA's Mariner 10 spacecraft in 1975. This mapped around 45% of the surface and seems to be the main source for texture maps. But in 2011, Messenger did a more comprehensive visit to the first planet. NASA have released all their imaging data, including this lovely texture map. It is false colour, but when you're setting up a planet in black space with a strong orange sun, a little false colour looks so much more visually interesting. I'll also need a bump map, and to generate this I use normal map online, web address in the description below. It's really simple to use, just take your image, provided it's not excessively large, upload it to the site and volo vont. Here's a normal bump map for you to download. Yeah, it looks weird, but that's because it's meant to. One last bit of prep. The texture map of Mercury isn't complete around the poles. I tried in Photoshop to improve this area, but tools like Content Aware Fill couldn't cope with the spherical wrapping. I suppose I could spend an age wrapping and unwrapping the textures, but instead I used Content Aware Fill to add the colour and then blurred it out and resolved not to look at that area on camera. Finally, I can bring these images into After Effects. And here I am. I've created a 1080p comp, I've added both images to the comp and turned them off. Now I'll create a new solid. Making sure my comp is selected, I'll go to the top menu and click Layer, New, Solid. I'll make sure the layer is the same as the comp size and click OK. Next in Effects and Presets, I'll search for Orb. Drag that onto my new layer. Being the semi-organized type, I'll select my layer, hit the Enter key and rename it Mercury. In the effects control options, I'll now expand the maps section and start linking in my textures. In the diffuse layer, I'm going to select the color layer, and in the bump map option, I'll set the bump image. I do need to tell Orb that I've added it as a normal map. Now let's create a camera. Go to Layer, New Camera. Leave it as the 50mm preset and click OK. Now in the toolbar, select the Unified Camera tool, and with your mouse, start to fly around and zoom in. It looks okay, but maybe a bit cartoonish. In the bump layer, I'm going to reduce that bump down from 1 to 0.3. That'll take the extreme bumps down quite a bit. It is a planet after all. Now let's open up the materials section and reduce the specular to zero. It's a dusty, dry planet. We don't need anything shiny. Next, let's add a sunlight. But to do that, first I'm going to create a 3D null and link my orb to it. That'll make it easier later on when I'm animating. So I'm going to go to Layer, New, and this time Null Object. Hit Enter and name it Mercury Null. And make it a 3D layer by clicking here. Hit P on the keyboard to expose the 3D position coordinates. Then switch over to the Mercury layer and hit the E key to expose the orb effect in the timeline. Twill down the controls. Now, using the Pick Whip, link the position setting to the position of the Mercury Null Object. And as you can see, the planet is now linked to the Null layer which comes in really handy if I'm using a different view or the planet is off screen. I can link Orb's rotation settings to the rotation of the null in the same way, but I don't have to. 
Normally planets don't move that fast, so it's safe to keyframe on the effect itself. Still, I'll show you here in case you want to use it at some point. Instead of doing it in the exact same way as the position keyframe, I'm going to add a wrinkle which gives me a bit more control. Select the null object again and hit R on the keyboard to expose the rotation keyframes. Now on the orb X rotation, Alt click on the stopwatch. This opens up the expressions for that keyframe. Type value plus and then click and drag on the pick whip to the X rotation of the null object. This allows me to add to the rotation of the null object by keyframing values. I'll repeat for the Y and Z keyframes and then I'll be able to demonstrate why you might want to do this. So, now I can keyframe a spinning rotation for the planet using the Y axis settings, which means I can time the planet's day. But I can use my null to alter the orbital rotation of the planet's year. Last thing, let's add that light. Go up to Layer, New, Light. Make sure it's Parallel White Light and click OK. Now you don't have to do the following, but I like to as it makes things easier. Twirl down the settings for the light and open up the transform options. Select the Mercury Null layer again and hit P to open up the position keyframe. Back on the light, pick whip the point of interest to the Null's position. This way our sunlight will always be pointing to the planet, which seeing as the sun is spherical and the planets orbit around the sun makes sense. Lastly for the light, I'm going to set the Y coordinates to match the planets and I'm going to set the X and Z coordinates to be somewhere off screen so I can see what's happening. I'll switch to the top view and drag it around to the side away from the camera. Now because Mercury is still in the center of the coordinates, I can see it in the preview. But if it had been outside the window, I can still use the null object to locate it. If I was using element 3D, maybe because you have other 3D objects or because your graphics card can't handle orb, the process for texturing is pretty similar. Set up your custom texture layers. And then go into element and create the sphere. I'd increase the segments from 6 to at least 32, which is good for distances. Although there's been times when I've set it to up another 100 at least. Use the custom texture layers for the diffuse and bump textures. Reduce the bump down from 1 to about 0.3, just fighting that cartooniness again. Make sure the glossiness and specular are down to zero. Before we leave element, I'm going to select the sphere model again, and this time scroll down to the UV mapping and change the texture mapping to sphere. Jumping out of the element console, in the render settings, in the physical environment set the lighting influence to 100%. Then enable shadows, and in the shadow mode, change the mode to ray trace. That'll get rid of that weird banding. Okay, so that's it. Looking at the two planets side by side, it's up to you which method you use. Orb is free, gives you an easy way of adding atmospheres, and, and while this is just anecdotal, it does seem to be less taxing on my PC. Incidentally, I have a way of adding atmospheres to an Element 3D planet, but then Orb came out and it didn't seem worth making a tutorial for that. If you want me to do so, leave a note in the comments. Actually that goes for any of the other things in the teaser too. If the holograms or planetscape is what you're after, just let me know. Thanks for watching, next up in the series is Venus and for that I'll be creating planet-wide cloud cover.